Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute crochet book sleeve. It's made out of granny squares, half double crochets. There's a little bit of decreasing and some whip stitching, but I promise if you're a beginner, this is something that you could totally do. And it's a really cute project to work up. As for materials, you can use really whatever yarn that you want. I will be using a weight for acrylic yarn. This is just the Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. And I think it's a really nice one. I like to use acrylic yarn for this. It just seems better for me. But you can use as many colors as you want also. I will be using four colors today and kind of like alternating um, some of them. But you can use as many colors as you want. The biggest size that I've gone to is up to six colors. And I typically stick with five. Today I will be doing five. You'll be seeing something that looks like this. But we will be doing four colors and five rounds basically but you'll need your yarn you will also need a five and a half millimeter hook a pair of scissors and then a tapestry needle and let's go ahead and get started for the first round you'll take your first color and we're going to be making a magic loop so we're going to take our two fingers here and then take your third finger and grab the yarn wrap the yarn around those two fingers and then with it facing forward, make an X towards you, turn it away, and these should be parallel. You can grab it with your pinky if you'd like. Go ahead and take your hook, yarn under, or hook under the first piece of yarn, grab the second one, pull it up, and then I will like I like to just grab everything right here. Wrap it around your fingers like you normally do, and then I will chain one to secure it and that is your magic loop we will go ahead and chain two more for a total of three chains and this will count as your first double crochet so now we will place two more double crochet into your magic loop and a double crochet is yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull through three loops on the hook yarn over pull through two and then yarn over, pull through two. We'll do that one more time. Yarn over, insert your hook into the loop, yarn over, pull through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, then again, yarn over, pull through two. So now you will have three double crochet, with this being your chain three, and then you did two double crochets. Now you will chain two, and then you will place three double crochets into your magic loop again. So go ahead and place your three double crochets. That's one, two, and three. So now you have three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And we're going to do this until we have four sets of three double crochets. So we have two, so we need two more. So we will chain two, one, two. And then sometimes I like to just make my magic ring a little smaller, just so it's a little bit easier to get into. Place three double crochets. Then we'll do a chain two. And then our final three double crochets. And then we will finish off with chain two for our final corner. I'm gonna pull my magic ring loop super tight so that it goes it goes together and then into so you have your chain three right here and then there's this your very first stitch here we're going to slip stitch into the top of that stitch and a slip stitch is just insert your hook yarn over pull through and then pull through again and that is your first round 
Now, if you're changing colors like I am, what I like to do is I will chain one just as a security measure. measure. And then we're going to cut our yarn and then pull through. And so then you have your first round. So for our next round, we're not going to go into the same side that we ended on. It just so that way our uh, our granny square doesn't start swirling kind of weird. So what I like to do is I like to just go into the opposite corner. So that would be this one over here. So I'm just going to move that onto the side that I need. And we're going to change colors into a corner space. So this is the corner space I will be going into. I'm going to place my hook into that. Take my new color. And I'm going to wrap it around so it looks like this. And then I'm going to pull it through. So I have a, a loop on my hook. And then just so I can secure it, I'm going to take both strands. So I've got my working strand and then my my loose strand. And I'm going to wrap it around my hook and chain one. That way it just secures it. I'm going to let go of my working yarn or not my working yarn, my loose yarn. Take my working yarn and then we will chain two more. So here's one and two for a total of three. So I'm going to scoot this over. I'm also going to be crocheting over this piece. You don't have to, but I'm going to. And then we're going to place two more double crochets into this corner space. So now you should have three with this being your chain three and it counts as your first stitch and then two more double crochet. Now we will chain two to make our corner. I'm going to scoot this over a little more and then into that same corner space. We're going to place three more double crochet. All right, so now our corner space should have three double crochet, chain two, and then three more double crochet. And that's what you're going to do in all of your corner spaces. So we'll go into the next space, make three double crochet. There's your three. Then we'll chain two to make the corner. Place another three double crochet into that space. So now we have two. Go into this next corner space. I'm just going to pull this back so that it's out of my way. Go into the next space, place three double crochet. Then we'll chain two to make the corner. I have to pull more yarn. So you have your three double crochet, chain two, into the same space, place another three double crochet. And then into the last corner, we'll do the same thing. So place three double crochet. And then we'll chain two. And then three more double crochet into that corner space. So now you should have in every single corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet all the way around. Once you get back to the beginning, we're going to skip the chain three, place your hook into the top of your next stitch and place a slip stitch. This is if you're going to change colors. Then I like to chain one and then just from your yarn. Now you should have two rounds done. For round three, we're going to change colors again. And again, I like to go into the opposite corner of where I finished off. So we finished off over here. So I'm going to go in over here. And I will go into another corner space. Same way as before. Insert my hook into that corner space. We're going to take the yarn, place it over the hook. We've got the loose yarn and the working yarn. Pull a loop. And then I'm going to take both of those strands, wrap it around, chain one. I'm going to drop that loose one. And then we will chain two more for a total of three chains. Then I will be working over that yarn again, 
place two more double crochets. Now you will have a total of three with your chain three counting as the first one. Go ahead and chain two. Scoot that over and then place three more double crochet into the corner. So now into your corner space, you should have three double crochet, chain two, and then three double crochet. So now we're going to skip over into this empty space right here. And we are going to place three double crochet. And then you will be repeating this sequence all the way around. So in your corner spaces, you will do three double crochet, chain two, and then three more double crochet into that same space. And then go into the middle space and place three double crochet. And you'll repeat that all the way around until you meet up at the very end. And that's where I will meet you. Once you've gone all the way around, you're going to do the same thing. You'll skip that chain three at the beginning. Place your hook into the top of that next stitch and place a single crochet or a slip stitch. Sorry, not a single crochet. You'll place a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain one just to secure and then I will be cutting my yarn again. And that is your next round. And so you're basically going to be repeating that same thing over and over where you will switch your color into the opposite end. So that would be over here. Change colors. Like before. You'll chain one and then two more, which is a total of three into your corner stitch, place another two double crochet chain two, then in the same stitch, place three more double crochet, and then into the middle stitches or the middle spaces here, you will place three double crochet. So three double crochet into the next space. And then into that next space, place another three double crochet. And then again into the corner space, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Continue that all the way around until you get to the end. And then you will slip stitch into the top of this and just continue that same sequence all the way around until you get the size that you want. I will be doing this white row and then I will do one more row after and then I will meet you guys once I get there. Once you get all the way to the end, you can go ahead and weave in your ends. And for this book sleeve, you will need six granny squares. So go ahead and make five more of these and then weave in all of their ends and then we will go to the next step. So now you should have six of your granny squares and now we are going to be putting them together. We're going to be putting to putting them together so that they are two by three wide. And I like to do this by using a, a, a whip stitch. So I'll show you how to do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to place your two granny squares. Make sure that the, the right side so that you can see that this is the right side and then this is the wrong side. You can just see that the stitches look a little bit like a little bit different. This is where you like you might see some of your your ends sticking out, but make sure you have the right sides facing up and then place the right sides facing together. So now when you look at it, both of them together, the wrongs, the wrong sides will be facing outwards. Then whatever color you used for your border is the color that you're going to use for stitching these two together. You can use whatever stitching you like. You can do a slip stitch. You can do a single crochet, but I like to just whip stitch it together. So I'll show you how I do that. So you're going to take your tapestry needle and place 
that border color on your needle and then you'll take your two granny squares and you're going to start at one of the corners. I like to start on the left side, but you can start on the right side if you'd like. But you will look and see that you have your chain two. So you can see if there's one and then here's two. I'm going to start in this second one. I guess it's technically the first one on this side. And I'm going to place my needle through only that first loop. So I'll place that through the whole thing. Not all the way because we're going to tie this at the end. And then on my second granny square, you can also see in that corner space, we have the first one and the second one, those chain two right there. And I'm going to place my needle through that first, that first chain, but only through that back loop. So there's, there's two loops. You can see here's the first loop and then there's a second loop. So there's two loops. We're going to place it through just the back loop. I'm going to pull that, whoops, pull that through. And then once you have pulled those through, I like to just tie it with a knot or like just like a single, single pull through. And then just make sure you have everything lined up. I'm going to bring my yarn back to the front and then I'm going to find that second chain, which is right here. I'm going to go through that, the first loop here and then go to the other side. And you can see right here, that's that back loop of the second chain. I'm going to go through that one and just pull all the way through. It's a little bit harder when you have chains, but the rest of these should be a little bit easier. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be going back and forth. So weaving this way, this way, this way, but in the back loops only. So you can see that on your stitches here, you will have a little V. So here's like a little V right here. So you have, this is the back loop and then this would be the front loop right here. If you had, if you were looking at it from the right side. So what we're going to do is since I'm on, I'm on this side, we're going to go through the back loop of the next stitch and the back loop of this stitch and pull it all the way through. And then again, you can see you've got your little V right here. This is the back loop that we want to go through right here. And then we've got our V over here and we're going to go through that back loop. And we're just going to do that all the way across until you get to your chain two on the other side. So go to the back loop and the back loop, pull through. Back loop, back loop, pull through. And then just keep doing this all the way across. So I've made my way across and I am now like one stitch away from the chain two at the end. Actually, no, I am right at that. Okay, perfect. We are at the chain two on both sides. So you can keep your piece held together, but if you need to be able to see it just a little bit more, you can pull it apart and you can kind of see. So you have your chain two. So here's chain one, chain two right here on this side, chain one, chain two. And we're going to do the same thing where we're going to take that back loop of the first chain, the back loop of the second chain, go through. And then for that final chain, we'll do again the back loop of that one and the back loop of this one. Now for that very last one, don't pull it all the way through because we're going to make a little loop and then we're going to be knotting it. So now you have your end piece 
on this side. You also have your tail on this side, but it should be all connected together. So go ahead and weave in these two ends and then we will move on to the next part. So now you should have two granny squares that are attached together in the middle. And you're going to do this for all of your granny squares. So you'll do sets of two. So you'll have three sets of two. And then what we will be doing next is attaching them together fully. So you're going to do that same whip stitch process for connecting your sets of two together. So I have these four. These two would get connected at the top here. And the same thing, you'll make sure that you have your correct size. So the right side, and then this is the wrong side. You'll have your right sides facing together and you'll just attach it with the whip stitch at the top all the way across. When you get into the middle, it can get a little bit tricky, but as long as you have it lined up pretty close, that's really all that matters. But go ahead and attach all of your, your sets together. So you'll have them all connected in one long piece that has six granny squares all together. Once you have all of your granny squares together, it will look something like this. It looks a little bit funky right now, but as we add a border along the edge and then I'm going to be blocking mine, it will kind of come together, straighten out a little bit more. But the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to do the border all the way around. So we're going to take one end and we will be going into the right side of one of the ends with the right side facing out. So you can change your border color if you would like, but I'm going to keep mine the same. So we're in the top right corner and this is where your chain two space is. We're going to go ahead and insert our hook and attach our yarn the same way as we've been attaching it before. So I like to pull up a loop and then I will take both of these strands and chain one. We're just going to be chaining one this time. So now we are going to place three half double crochets into this corner space. So a half double crochet is yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. You'll have three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So there, there you go. That chain one also did not count as your first stitch. So then we'll place two more half double crochets into that stitch. So again, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And then we'll do that one more time. Now you should have three half double crochets into your chain two space. Now we are going to work along the top edge here. And I'm just crocheting over that end piece, but you don't have to. So now we will be placing one half double crochet into each stitch all the way until we reach our join space in the, right here in the middle. So you'll place your first half double crochet into the top of this chain, uh, this uh, double crochet from the previous round. Go ahead and place that first half double crochet. So there's that. And then continue placing one half double crochet into each stitch until you reach that very first join space. So I've just made it to where that join space is. You can see right there, right in the middle, this is our join. And then here are our two granny squares attached. So I'm going to go ahead and place a half double crochet decrease through here. At least I think that's what it is. This is what I've been doing and it works out really well. So a half double crochet decrease or the way that I do it is we are going to yarn over. I'm going to place my hook into there's a space that's just right here. I'm going to place that in here. Yarn over, pull through. So now we have three loops on the hook. I'm going to chain or pull through two. So now I have two loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go into another space. There's not really like a specific stitch here. So I'm just kind of going through spaces, but I'm going to go through the space right over here. Yarn over, 
pulls through. Now I have four loops on the hook. So I'm going to pull through two. And now I have three loops on the hook. And then I will yarn over, pull through all three. So now that kind of fixes that little divot that we had right there. And then we are just going to continue placing half double crochets all the way until you reach the next corner. And then I will meet you over here. Once you reach the next side, you will be at your next chain two space. This will be on the left. You're going to go ahead and place three half double crochets into that stitch, just like we did at the very beginning. So there are my three half double crochets right in there. And now we are going to be turning to work along the long side of this. And you're going to do that same exact thing where you place one half double crochet into every stitch until you reach a join space. So here's my next join. You'll do a half double crochet decrease the same way that I showed you. Go all the way across one half double crochet in each stitch. Next join space. Do a half double crochet decrease. Half double crochets in every stitch until the next corner. And then you will place three half double crochets into the corner. And then again along the rest of the sides. You will do that all the way until you reach the very beginning where we have our very first half double crochets triple right here so go ahead and continue that and i will meet you back at the beginning once you've made your way all the way around we're going to go ahead and slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet so there's that one and then we're going to slip stitch into the second one as well and that's going to bring us up so that we can add our next row for this next row, we're going to go ahead and we're going to chain one. And then we will place a double crochet into that same stitch. And then we are going to place one double crochet in each stitch until we meet the second stitch of our chain three in the next corner. So one double crochet all along this top until you get to the second stitch in your three half double crochets. All right, I've just gotten to my three half double crochets on the next corner and I'm going to place my double crochet into that first one and then the second one. So now you should have a row of double crochets all done. For this next row, we will be going back to half double crochets. So we're going to chain one and then turn our work. So once you've chained one and turned, we're going to place half double crochets into every single stitch all the way until the end. So that's the last one that you have to do. Make sure that you get that last one on this corner, but it's one half double crochet in each stitch until the end and I will meet you back when that is done. Now that you've finished your half double crochet row, that is the last row that you will need for this top part. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to leave a long tail. This is so that I can weave it in later. Go ahead and cut your yarn and then pull through. And so now what you should have is a border at the top with your six granny squares all attached with a border along the edge too. And so at this point, this is where I like to block my piece, which is what I will be doing. If you want more information on how to block your crochet pieces, oh, this is actually the, the right side here. But if you want more information on how I block my pieces, go ahead and let me know down below and I can make a whole video about that. But I'm going to go block this piece and then we can go ahead and meet back up to weave in the sides and put it all together. So now that you have all of your pieces sewn together, I have all six of my pieces sewn together, we're going to be attaching it along the side up to a certain point. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So in order to get 
the sizing that you want when you fold it over. I like to just take a standard paperback book. They're usually around six by nine inches. Um, this I grabbed kind of a thicker one too, just to just to be sure. But go ahead and grab that so you can figure this out. I also have like a specific like point that I like to I like to sew up to, which I will tell you guys when we get there. But we're gonna go ahead and we will flip over our piece so that we're looking at the wrong side. You still have your yarn attached and that side is the side that we'll be folding over as well. So you'll take your book and I try to put it a little bit over uh, the last two granny squares that will have the double crochet and half double crochet siding. But you basically just want it to be able to cover the whole book. Now remember that yarn does stretch so it's okay if it like barely touches but you kind of want to be able to fit it all the way in there and then you can fold over your top to see what that's going to look like so you can do something like that it, that way you can make your your bag fit any size book but what i'm going to do is i'm going to count from the second stitch so, so you have three stitches in your top corner here I'm going to start from that second stitch to the middle stitch and count down 14 stitches. And then I'm going to place a stitch marker. I usually like to do between 14 and 16, depending on like just whatever I'm feeling at that moment. So we can go ahead and we can test this, place our book in, fold this over a little bit. And you basically want this edge, so this edge of the top flap to hit where that stitch marker is. And then when I fold this over, it's going to fold over really nicely. So I'm going to have that stitch marker there at number 14, stitch number 14. Then I'm going to place a stitch marker in the same spot on the other side. So now that we have both of our stitch markers placed, I'm going to just close these up really quick so that they don't fall out. But now that we have both of those in place, we will be actually attaching it. So we're going to flip it back over to the right side. And we are going to be folding over where right side touches right side. So the same way that we attached our granny squares are, is the same way that we're going to be attaching it through the side, which is the whip stitch. So I'll start with the side that has my yarn still attached. So we're going to fold over your piece until where your yarn is coming off meets with your stitch marker. Once you've folded over, you're going to go ahead, attach your yarn to your tapestry hook or your tapestry needle. And then you're just going to basically attach it where your stitch marker is into that 14th stitch. I like to do just like a regular knot to start off with. So I'm going to pull this all the way through. So now it's attached right here. And I'm going to go through that same one. So it's just this top stitch right here. Go back through until I have like a little loop left and then I will make a knot just so that way I know that it's that it's secure and then the same way that we were attaching our granny squares is the way that we're going to we're going to attach the sides so that's the whip stitch and if you don't remember I'll give you a little bit of a refresher. The whip stitch is going into the back loop so you can see you have little V's right here. So here's a little V. You go through the back loop of this V on one side and then into, here's another V right here, the back loop on the other side and then you would pull through. And you're just going to do that back and forth all the way until the end. Once you've done that you will go ahead and cut your yarn, weave it through a little bit, and then do the same thing on the other side. And I will meet you back once both of those sides have been done. I'll show you really quick once you get to the end here. So you can see that I've fully attached both sides. You just have like one little stitch left. You can just go ahead and kind of go through randomly. And I like to make a knot at the end. Whoops. We'll make a knot just to secure and then you would weave in your ends and then you would do the same thing on the other side. For the other side what I usually 
do is I'm using the same piece of, of yarn that I cut from the other side and I'm just going to go through that first stitch on one piece, go into the stitch with the stitch marker, pull it almost all the way through, and then I'm just going to tie a knot just to secure. I'm just going to do one. I think that should be okay. And then at the end, once you've woven in, you've attached both sides here, I would go in and I would take this and just weave it through so that it's super secure. But make sure you attach like that. Or you could do single crochets, but I just like the whip stitch. So now I will meet you back when this side is finished. Now that you have both sides attached, you can see that I have both sides fully attached. Now you can go ahead and flip your piece inside out so that the right side is facing out. Just fix those corners. So now technically it's finished. You can just flip this over and you've got your book sleeve. We'll test it out, see if this is a good size. Oh, that's perfect. Flip it over. Yeah, that's perfect. And there's that. So now we just have to make a little tie piece. With the tie piece, I don't really have like a specific number that I do, but you're basically just, just going to be making a chain. So you'll make a slip knot, place it on your hook. I'm still using that five and a half millimeter hook. And then I just kind of chain until I feel like it's long enough. So it's probably around like 50 to 70 chains, I would think. But you're basically just going to make a chain that is long enough to go and a to tie into the top flap and the bottom flap and I guess make a bow. But you will just make your chain for as long as that is and then I will show you how to attach it. Now that we've made our chain, which I just checked and my chain is around 20 to 22 inches long, um, I'm just going to like crochet a couple of more just as a security measure and then I will cut that off of there pull through and then I like to just to make it look pretty I will make a little knot at the end with some of the extra that I chained at the end there I'll make a double knot just to secure it So I have a knot at the end, I'll just trim the excess. And then we will do the same thing on the other side. Now you have your tie. So then you're just going to take the top of your, the top flap, fold it over. I like to do this with a book in just so I have an idea of where on the bottom it should be. So I'm going to fold this over and I can see that I have these two holes. I don't know if you can see them. So there's a hole here and a hole here. That's what I'm going to be feeding my yarn through. So wherever these land is where I'm going to put in my, my ties. So it's about, I'm going to put my finger here, just about right here. So in, so you, you'll have your two lines here from where you whip stitch together your granny squares. I'm just going to kind of go through one of them. So here's that top loop, go into the next one. So now I've got these two loops and then we're going to feed our tie through that and it might be a little bit a little bit tight but just gently pull through it and then I'll go halfway now I have a tie that is attached there once you fold it over you can place one of your ties through that hole so here's one and I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the second one. So now 
you will have your finished tie. So now your book sleeve should be done. You basically are just going to take this off, pull through. You don't even have to pull through all the way. Sometimes I don't. And you can access your book. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I love making these. These are one of my favorite things to make. And they're relatively easy. They're great if you're a beginner learning how to do double crochets and half double crochets, learning how to whip stitch. It's a really great project and I hope that you guys had a great time. Let me know down below what colors you're going to do for your project. And if you want this specific one, I will have it up on my Etsy within the next few days probably. So you can go check that out. All of my links are down below. You can follow me. You can subscribe if you would like. You can like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Go ahead and let me know again what colors you're choosing, if there's anything that you would like to see, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.